Ooh, ah, oh, yeah, let's do this. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at another installment of the Into the Light series. Now over the years, I've had a wonderful opportunity to share with you uh, some really great lights. EDC lights that were, in a couple cases they were budget lights, but mostly I focused on the higher end custom lights. Your $500 and up two, three, four thousand dollar $4,000 lights. And before we get into this one, which is sitting right here, uh, I want to discuss with you just very, very briefly, if you're looking for a good everyday carry flashlight that's just going to shine light, give you lots of performance and not break the bank, uh, you got a lot of great options out there. The FW3A, go to Amazon.com, type in FW3A, you'll get a hell of a light for about, I don't know, what are they, 50, 60 bucks. But when we're talking about custom lights, we're looking at something entirely different. It's a lot like when we buy into custom-made knives. Yes, you can go to Walmart and buy a knife for 30, 40 bucks. It's going to cut shit. But a lot of times when you're a collector, especially of finer things, you're not just looking at the base performance. Uh, think of it this way. Uh, it's probably even easier to compare it to cars. You can buy a $300,000 McLaren or a million dollar McLaren and it will drive you to work the exact same way that a $35,000 Honda will. So the guy that owns the Honda may look at the guy in the McLaren and go, why would you spend so much money? But the thing is, guys that are really into cars understand that there's a difference between a daily driven Honda that's going to be reliable and it's going to give good gas economy to a hand-fabricated, completely custom-made vehicle that gets shitty gas mileage, can't really drive over the speed limit legally anyway, but you know that it can. You know that it can exceed those boundaries. You're also buying it because it's a little bit more rare. People aren't going to see it as often. It makes you feel a little bit more special by getting it. And the fact that you can dictate how it's made in some ways also adds to the speciality of owning it. So you're going to pay more for it. So with that out of the way, hopefully it's going to avoid a lot of the comments about an $800 flashlight, a $1,000 flashlight, y'all are fucking idiots. We're collectors. Yes, we all own lights that cost a lot less money and we enjoy them. But when it comes to owning something special, something that's a unique representation of your personality, the things that you like, you know, maybe you're a rich dude. I don't know. We can't walk around with your Picasso strapped to your back to show people out in the real world and show your buddies when you're on the gun range. But something like a high-end custom light, you've got the utilitarian function of it, but you've also got the wow factor. It's also something that when you hold it yourself, you feel like you've got something special. You don't own something that anybody else can just run into a store and buy. You own something that not everybody else could even go online and just register to buy. You've got something that was handcrafted, hand-finished, hand-fitted, and custom-made in a configuration that you chose or you chose from the custom configurations that were available at the time that spoke to you. That's entirely different 
than buying something that's production made, mass produced. They're all the same. You may have a variance in colors and you and your 10 buddies all have the same light. This is something entirely different, and this was many years in the making. Now, when we go down to the tabletop and I give you some close-ups of this, I'm going to give you an idea of what I went through to design this light and the struggles <laughs> that I went through to find somebody that had the machining capability to be able to make it. So what you're looking at here is a collaboration between myself, Skeleton Blade Works, and Jordy Wallace over at Focusworks EDC. And you can visit his website at focusworksedc.com. Now, if that name sounds familiar to my viewers, it's because uh, a little over a year ago, maybe, maybe almost two years ago now, I did a review on his Eryx F1 EDC light. And that was what really told me this is the guy that I've got to pitch my design to. And I had talked to a couple of other makers. One even got to the point of drawing up some CADs and they looked terrible. Nobody could execute what I was pouring out of my mind. And I'm going to discuss with you just how difficult some of those challenges were. You're looking at something that requires a, not only a great deal of machine time, but a great deal of genius in order to overcome the obstacles that my design brought forward. Because, you know, I don't make flashlights. I make knives. I don't have a lathe. I don't have a CNC. So I don't know all of the limitations that are involved in manufacturing a light. So I can design anything I want. And, you know, woo! But the fact is, not all things can just be done that you think of. Jordy somehow figured out a way to not compromise on any part of this. He actually made the light about 99% of the way that I had sketched out. All the things that I requested, he was able to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a deep dive. We're going to go down to the desktop like we always do. We're going to get a close-up view at this light. But what we're also going to do, just like I always do into, in my Into the Light uh, episodes, I'm going to take a couple of other lights, and we're going to do some comparisons with the beam shots. We're going to take them outside, let you see how they perform. While you're not buying this solely on performance, yeah, it's still a 1500 lumen light versus, uh, I don't remember what the FW3A is. I'll remember by the time I go to the tabletop. And this custom here that I'll discuss later um, is just under a thousand or right around a thousand. So you're still getting great performance and you're getting secondaries. You're getting a custom driver built to the way that you can program it however you want. But it's not purely on performance. A lot of it is aesthetics. A lot of it is going to be uh, the, the, the incredible finish work that's done. That's going to be the tritium that's involved if you choose to go with tritium or not. And the care that went into all of the smallest details in this light, including the pocket clip, that really you just don't see in any other lights. Even lights costing significantly more than this. So without any further ado, let's head down and take a look at it. Okay, so let's start right from the very beginning with the specs and the packaging. This is the packaging that you'll be receiving with the light. A really, really nice waterproof dive case. These were uh, custom made uh, specifically for us, for Focusworks. When you open it up, these are the things that you're going to find inside. First is this bad boy here. Get the camera to focus. There we go. Uh, that shows our collaboration, Jordy and myself with the Cylon in the middle. And on the back, you can simply pause the video here if you want to read all this. This is the basic story of uh, how the lights came to be. Next up will be your COA card. Shows that you are getting a, uh, in my case, the prototype. This is the Cylon prototype. Material is titanium. It's got the uh, Dragon driver inside. It's specifically made for this light. Uh, a date of birth and then Jordy's signature. Uh, because Jordy's in Canada and I'm in the U.S., we weren't both able to sign uh, the COA cards because it would be completely senseless and really, really expensive for him to do all this stuff, package it all up, ship them all to me just for me to, to sign these and then ship them out to you. Uh, and there it is on the back. The... Uh, Website information, focusworksedc.com. Then uh, Jordy's 
business card is going to be in there and your description of how to run the different mode groups in this Dragon Driver. Now, if anybody has any problems figuring out how to um, program the Dragon Driver, the videos are on our website, plus there's YouTube videos. Just type in Dragon Driver Programming and you'll find a lot of really great resources that teach you how to program it. And then, well, who doesn't love stickers? You get a Focusworks EDC sticker. And then, of course, the most important thing of all, right inside there, is your light! Safely ensconced within this, ugh, within this foam, uh, Jordy laser cuts all these himself in the shop. So, yeah, even the foam is taken care of in-house. Now, let's get to the light. It is a big, heavy light. Please do keep that in mind. Um, if you were to get the brass or you were to get the uh, copper, it is very heavy. Please keep that in mind. Uh, titanium is significantly lighter in weight. Let's get this uh, boom, 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 boom. We'll get the glow gasket going here so you can see the glow gasket in action. And uh, I'll just kill the lights real quick so you can see that. There is your glow gasket. Let the camera focus there on the, uh, on the light for a second. And as a matter of fact, we're going to try that again without my overhead light on that I forgot to turn off. Charge up the glow gasket. Okay, let's see. There you go. Now you can really see that glow gasket working. You can also see all the tritium. Look how gorgeous that is. So you've got tritium um, just at the top of the body where it meets the head. You have tritium in the pocket clip and then tritium in the tail cap as well. And uh, believe you me, this was not an easy or an inexpensive way to do things. It's, um, and that's the unfortunate thing as a uh, side effect of COVID. The supply of tritium has dried up around the world. Most flashlight companies that you buy that have uh, tritium installed into their custom lights, they're going to be uh, Chinese sourced. So they're fairly kind of inexpensive. Um, Quality control isn't actually that bad out of China. Um, these are actually Swiss tritium. They were legally imported under license and installed in a clean room environment. Uh, but the company that was doing that for us, unfortunately, uh, has gotten too big and too crazy doing compasses and night sights for these huge corporations. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of of uh, tritium installs versus our several hundred. Uh, so we were kind of pushed by the wayside. So we are now looking at a different supplier. So for a couple of drops, we're going to be doing these as naked lights. So they'll be, they'll be uh, slotted for tritium, but no tritium installed. That saves you about 300 bucks. Yeah, that's how expensive tritium and the install is. Um, actually, we're not even charging you for the install. You're paying literally what we pay raw prices for the tritium. Um, as we go to get more, then we're going to start installing them again. Uh, so for right now, you get to save the money. And if you decide down the road, uh, hey, I want tritium. All you do is uh, send the light back to us and we will install the tritium for you. Uh, or Jordy will, I should say. And uh, so that gives you a nice money-saving option if you're buying early on right now. We just did the first shipment. The entire first orders have gone out. They were filled with tritium. A couple people opted to go naked so they could save the $300. And you can now do that too. When you place your order, you save 300 bucks. Then if you decide down the road, hey, I can afford tritium now. I want to go ahead and do it. Um, then it can be done after the fact. So let's talk about some specs here. Uh, it does take an 18650 lithium ion battery and you can do the button top or flat top, does not matter. It will accept both. Uh, you will receive a battery and a charger included in your packaging as part of the purchase price. There is a custom Dragon driver installed and that is made specifically uh, for this light. And the way that we have it set up is uh, whatever secondary color you choose, I happen to have red. You have low secondary, high secondary, um, a medium light, white light, and then the high. 
Uh, so that's the way they're set up from us. But they can't. If you say, "Hey, I want a different program set up," Jordy's happy to do that for you. Otherwise, you read on the back of the card how to set it up for yourself. There's a lot of different modes that you can choose. Um, let's see. Okay, so we have it right now is uh, 35% and uh, 100% is. Uh, oh wait, no, we have number six. Low secondary, high secondary, 50% and 100%. We have ours set to uh, to number six. Um, you can choose from a lot of different ways if you want to use the moonlight setting where it's like a half a lumen to start things off. There's a lot of different options. So again, I, I encourage you to watch the videos about it and uh, learn how to do the programming. It is very, 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 very simple. Um, your triple emitters inside are going to be Samsung LH351D and uh, the temperature is 5000 K. So that's your primary emitters. Very bright. Um, a little on the cool side, which is something that Jordy and I both kind of prefer. Um, it gives you that, that really bright, bright feel, but it's not, um, it's not so cool that it's taking away your depth of field. That's kind of important. You could do red, blue, or green secondaries. Amber is sometimes an option when we're able to do it. And uh, red, blue, or green glow gaskets inside. Mine is the red. You get a custom-made sapphire lens on there, so it's as scratch-resistant as a lens can be. We have a 1,500-plus lumen output. Now, this is what I was talking about uh, earlier in the, uh, the intro to the video. Yes, you can buy lights that are 1,500 lumens and even more for a lot less money. And again, we'll make that comparison with cars. You know, you could buy uh, two cars that do the same thing. You know, they get you to work and back and forth. Uh, but one is handmade with hand-fitted components, a hand-built motor, and just does things so much better and in more exotic materials. And it's going to cost you more. That's just the way it is. I was talking about this, the Lumentop FW3A. Man, that's a friggin' fantastic little light right there. Um, and the thing is, it puts out more lumens. This is like 2,800 lumens uh, on high. Uh, actually on turbo, I should say. So it's a fantastic little light. It's 45 bucks. So if you're looking for a, a light that you're just going to bang around and you're going to abuse and you just want something in your pocket, boom, 45 bucks. There you go. There's a dramatic difference though between an aluminum bodied mass produced light that, you know, 5,000 of your, your, of the friends that you make on a flashlight group are going to have or something that's rare, exclusive, titanium, tritium, hand-fitted, hand-built, with over 10 hours of machine time, there's a dramatic difference in the value and the, and the cost that's involved. Uh, taking into account another custom, this is my Deadwood Customs Huckleberry. I love this light. It's a fun little light. Same driver that's inside uh, of the Cylon, and mine is actually programmed a little bit differently, so I've got more modes to choose from. Um, no glow gasket or anything, but this is, you know, this was about a $500 light and all it is is just a uh, stonewashed titanium, smooth bodied, no milling, nothing particularly fancy. Just a really great light, not, you know, uh, taken away from it at all. I've carried this for a long time and absolutely love it, but you've got a, uh, just a standard bent titanium. Actually, this is a cobalt clip. This was uh, an extra addition that uh, Michael Zeba made that I have on this. But, you know, it's normally just a bent titanium clip, not a sculpted, milled titanium clip like you see here. So there's a dramatic difference in price and in functionality and in the amount of work that goes into each of the three of these. There's nothing wrong with any of them, but you're buying into exclusivity. You're buying into something special. And uh, certainly the, <laughs> the machining work on this uh, is absolutely unrivaled. I don't care what you own, what you've seen out there in the past. What makes this so difficult? Well, when I designed these big old grooves that go right through the middle here, well, you got to realize it has to be made in a way where these threads line up and all the machining lines up. Now, I didn't realize how damn difficult that would be because, again, I don't have a CNC. I don't have a lathe. I don't make round things. I don't make things that have threads. Turns out, Jordy had to create an all-new process in order so that when you screw this down after you put your batteries in there, that it all lines up perfectly. 
Yeah, it's really that difficult. It was that much of a challenge. Uh, but he didn't say no. He still made it happen, and that's why I went to him. Um, you have the choice of tritium installs or naked, as I discussed before. They will all be slotted for tritium, so you could choose to do it or not, and then change your mind down the road by adding it. Get the custom packaging, COA card, everything that you saw in there. And your prices, if you're getting into copper or brass... You're looking at $750. Titanium is $975. And if you're a big spender, Zirconium, Zircutai, Mokutai, Darktai, Timascus are all $3,600 and up. Uh, Mokume, I think, is around $1,500 or so, maybe a little bit more. We haven't done a Mokume yet, but it is one of the options. And there are people out there that are going to go Timascus light for $3,600 plus. Well, yeah. The raw material, just the round stock raw material that's purchased, nothing done to it, just buying the raw material is $1,000. So yeah, you're going to pay a premium price because you're buying a premium grade product. And then all the machine time on top of it, all the hand finishing, all the polishing, and everything else that goes into building a light, you know, uh, installing the driver and everything else. There's a lot of work uh, that goes into these things. But what you're getting is a one-of-a-kind, very special item. You know, after collecting for uh, quite a few years now and owning some of the best, I've owned Lux RC, I've owned several Tanes, I've owned Hanko, I've owned Megizmos. My purpose was to make a light that was more intricate, more detailed, more difficult to build, and something that could be uh, revered as something special. And that came from the love I have for all of those lights. I don't look at those lights as being competition. They don't look at us as being competition, I wouldn't think, because we're all making something entirely different. But the inspiration came from having uh, these incredible custom lights that I found I always wanted to have in my pocket. I don't want to carry a Surefire. I don't want to carry a, 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 a cheap light that everybody has on them. I wanted something special. Yes, while I own an FW3A, this goes in my EDC backpack. That's my oh shit, get out of town bag with my, you know, my CZ Scorpion folded up in there and knives and first aid kits and th things like that. And I have a couple of flashlights in there as well. That's not something that I carry. I've never once put that in my pocket, even though it's a great light. It's just that, you know, if I'm meeting up with buddies or something, they're always, we're always going to go, hey, what's in your pocket? Let me see the knife you're carrying. Let me see the, uh, the light you're carrying, whatever else you're carrying. And, you know, as great as a, a light as it is, if I own this and I own this, which do you think I'd rather pull out of my pocket while we're discussing cool EDC shit? Yeah, you're right. I'm going to pull out something that they don't have in their pocket that is an absolute stunner. And if it happens to be in the dark, well, I get to show them that. And that's something that they don't have in their pocket. And you know what? It's kind of cool. It's kind of a nice feeling. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of tritium, as you can tell. And that was a uh, primary part of my designs. Now, there are three designs that are going to be coming in this series. The Cylon is the middle. The higher end and a little bit larger will be the Caprica. Much more milling involved and uh, more tritium installs. I'll pop a picture in picture in here somewhere to show that to you. And then there's going to be a smaller light, uh, more or less the, the length of this. And it's going to be called the Viper. So you're going to have the Caprica, you're going to have the Cylon, and you're going to have the Viper. And that's kind of the uh, the progression, the way that we're going with that. Uh, I'm currently in the process right now of redesigning the Viper, because both Jordy and I kind of want to do something a little bit different. It's going to be a lot of fun, so stay tuned for that. Basically, you'll be able to see the Caprica at Blade West this year, and uh, they'll be available probably around the holidays. We're kind of looking at that. And then the uh, the Viper coming later on. We may switch it up. We put the Viper out first. Who knows? We've been discussing lots of options. But let me give you some uh, close-ups here so you can really get a good look at the machining. Again, mine is a prototype. I've also carried this every single day for the past month and a half. So ignore blemishes. Ignore any marks that may be in here because this was uh, basically rushed out to me to get this uh, in my pocket so I could 
approve everything, that everything was the way that it needed to be. And uh, I absolutely love it. I've carried it every single day. There you see the, uh, the large valley of machining going up into this larger open area here. And what you've got is a wonderful degree of topography. There is a lot of depth from the high points to the low points in the machining. You do have a crenellated bezel, so when you put it down, you can see right there the, uh, the light will come out. I don't want to do that for too long because it will literally burn <laughs> into that because it's that's quite powerful. So where else? Well, we're looking at the uh, the machining here. See the machining right here where the uh, tritium tubes are installed. More beautiful machining throughout the body. One of the uh, very popular choices that people have made in the pre-order uh, was going with the bead blasted and then the satin finish on the, the higher surfaces. And it looks really, really, really good. There is that custom made pocket clip. That was a big part of the design that I wanted to do is have a really high end pocket clip, just like you would see on a high end knife, not a bent spring clip. People that have listened to me review knives for years know um, that if I'm looking at a high end custom knife, I don't want to see a cheap bent steel or titanium pocket clip. I want a sculpted milled pocket clip that goes with the design of the knife. So uh, when I was designing this, that was the point for the light was to have a good high quality pocket clip, you know, and, and, and we made this just slightly different. So you can't throw one of those gaudy, giant, huge fucking skull clips on there because it just doesn't belong on a light of this caliber. It just, it simply does not. There's your sapphire lens. You can see the triple emitters. You can see the secondaries. Again, we'll uh, fire up the glow gasket. Just not easy to see when the uh, lights are on here. But I felt it was important to get this video out, even though unfortunately I do not have any other examples to show you except for my titanium version. Um, I will try to throw in some pictures into this video of the copper, the brass, zircutai, mokutai, some of the exotics, the zirconium, and uh, give you an idea of what they look like. But I have not had a chance to photograph anything except for the titanium. And I got to tell you, um, I have handled the brass and the copper as they were on their way to a customer. Man, what a serious handful that light is. I'm extraordinarily proud about this. Um, I basically hand sketched this. I drew this on a piece of paper about four or so years ago, right as I was uh, at the height of my collecting of the custom lights. And then um, about six months later, I started shopping the design around, trying to get somebody uh, that was that was you know talented enough to make it. Um, talk to two people. One just flat out said, I, I, I can't do all this. I'm never going to be able to do this uh, in particular where that's going to line up between the head and the body. It's just too intricate. Uh, sorry, can't do it. And then uh, one company said they could. They even got to the point of drawing up CAD renderings. They changed things that I didn't want changed. I did not like it. And uh, we ended up not doing anything together. And then I sat on it for like another year, year and a half really disappointed that I was never going to get my designs made. And it was after I got my, my Eric's F1 from Jordy. I was like, Oh my God, this is, this is incredible. This is just a fantastic, the, the machining on this is insane. There's a crazy amount of work in this. This guy's got a lot of talent. And I went, this is the guy that can make the light. So I had been uh, talking to Jordy quite a bit. We had become friends and I said, hey, I've got a design for a light. I don't know what your production schedule looks like, but I really think, I think that you might be the only guy that, that can pull it off. He's like, well, let me see it. Let me see if I like it. And he saw it. He really, really liked the design. It was something that the design language was quite a bit different than uh, his design language, which is very organic. Mine is kind of uh, futuristic, robotic, whatever you want to call it. And um, he's like, yeah, I want to try that. I think I can do it. And uh, he made no compromises. He did everything that I wanted done on here. 
and um, that's it. I mean, he just he just knocked it out of the friggin' park. And, uh, you know, then COVID hit, and it slowed everything down, and all the suppliers slowed down, everything slowed down. So basically a year and a half, this has been in the works with Jordy. Now they're ready. Now they're available. We're doing monthly drops on the, the Focusworks EDC website. There's monthly drops. You can do special orders directly through myself or through Jordy. And these are going to be showing up at a couple of dealers. And uh, we'll see We'll see how they price them. I'm not, not really too sure about that yet. But to get the direct pricing, you go through uh, me or Jordy. Now let's talk about beam shots and we are going to take these outside at night in a little bit as well and um, I think it's we can get a small understanding of the power that, that this has right now I have that on high we'll go ahead and turn the light off and um, give you an idea of what that looks like very very intense spot very clean flood. That is on its highest right there. So I'm going to bump that back so you can kind of see what it's doing. And then we'll bring out the... Deadwood Customs, which is also a triple emitter. All three of these are going to be uh, triple emitters. The FW3A, that is also on high. Now you see that the Cylon is a little bit warmer. Uh, these are quite white. Very intense spot on there. It gets really, really soft toward the edges of the, uh, the floody area. Here's the Cylon again. You see it maintains... A really really good amount of light out toward the edge and don't worry that you're not able to see this all that great right now uh, because I'm going to be going outside in the dark and letting you see it much much better and there you see there's not a tremendous amount of uh, flood to this one and this one uh, that might actually throw a little bit further than the other two I'm gonna have to see I myself have not done that comparison yet outside in the dark turn that off turn that off sticky e-switch that's another thing you know you're not going to get total perfection off a 40 some odd dollar flashlight you got a mcclicky on that bad boy right there so again that's the uh the inside beam shots now we're going to take this outside and uh see how it how it performs against the other two then i'll give you my closing thoughts and we'll be out of here Okay, boys and girls, here it is in the nighttime. You get a chance to see the uh, the tritium once again. And now we're going to take a quick look at the different modes. There is the highest of the red secondaries, which you're not really going to use when you're outdoors or anything, at least for any kind of searching. But there is the low, and then there is the high. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice is you've got a nice clean bright spot and the spill is perfectly clean there's no cut off there's no dramatic drop off it's just nice and soft just like that comparison with the uh the mechismo haiku it's a nice soft trailing off as you can see very very useful but not not really overdoing it For comparison, we'll show this little guy right here, the Deadwood Custom. There's the low secondary, there's the high secondary, the, it's blue on this particular one. There's the lowest mode that I have it set to, medium, and this is the highest. Now again, for comparison, there's the Cylon. There's the Deadwood, Cylon again, Deadwood again. So the Cylon's definitely got a lot more output. 
and a lot more useful light. Now, I did promise I would show a comparison against the FW3A. I currently have it in memory mode to set to the highest. So to get that comparison, there's the Cylon and there's the FW3A. Now the FW3A advertises a lot more lumens and it's got a little bit of a brighter hotspot but you'll see the light really isn't any more useful than it is on the Cylon. The Cylon also, the, the particular emitters that are in here, a little bit more warm, a little bit more natural lighting so you get better depth of field. Try and give you guys a nice bit of coverage there so you can see it sweeping and you see the amount of area that's covered. And again, back to the FW3A, which looks dramatically dimmer. That's the turbo mode, and that's much more comparable to the Cylon. But that turbo mode is going to kick down in about 15 seconds or so because it's going to generate too much heat for the head. So when it kicks down, this is the normal high mode. So that gives you your real-world comparison between the Cylon and uh, another custom. And also, what I, I still tell you, you know, if you're just looking for a really good flashlight, you're not looking for something fancy, you're not looking for something that's going to break the bank. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of really great options out there. There's a lot of great budget options that you can be looking at. But if you're looking for something special, something that's handcrafted, tremendous amount of machine time, great hand finishing, and something wildly unique that you're not going to see in your buddy's pocket, well, the silence pretty much the way to go. Thank you.